Hi, today I'm going to show you how to do a headband slash ear warmer. And so to start this tutorial, of course, you're going to need you some yarn. I'm using a brand um, called Loops and Threads. Charisma is the, the name of the yarn that I'm going to be using. Um, and it is a bulk, I think, of a five. I'm going to use a um, crochet hook size N, nine millimeter. And we're going to start this tutorial by doing a slip knot and then we're going to um, do a chain. Um, so go ahead and do your slip knot. I do have a tutorial on how to do a slip knot. I've kind of slowed it down a little bit. So hopefully um, you, you got it on this one. If not, you can always click to my other video and see how to do a slip knot. Okay, the thing about this project here is you're going to be able to vary the size based off your head. <laughs> so um, the way I would do it if you're doing it for yourself is just measure your head and then once you've measured your head then do a chain a little bit shorter than what your the width um, the circumference of your head. In my case I'm doing a chain of 20. I'm sorry a chain of 60. Yeah. But I probably should have done a chain of 50. When I um, initially measured my head, I had um, my hair in a really puffy style. So um, I probably should have done a chain of 50 so that it could sit a little bit more snug. But anyway, here you are. I um, did my chain and then I'm just going to do a measurement to see. I'll try to find um, some standard measurements for heads just in case you're doing this for someone else and they're not with you. But yeah, so if, or you could just measure your head and then kind of just guesstimate. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just measuring it to show you the length. And I have a big head, so please don't judge me. <laughs> okay, so once you've completed that, you're going to do the stitch that we're going to use. Um, it's called a double crochet. And I've done a tutorial on how to do a double crochet, but I'll show you many times throughout this um, tutorial so that you can get it. Um, probably just by watching this. So you're going to do a yarn over and that's simply like I say putting the yarn behind the crochet hook. You're going to count over three and that third stitch, the, th the third, um, third stitch in that chain you're going to create complete a double crochet. So that's simply um, yarning over, putting the hook through the chain you're going to pull through two, yarn over again, and then pull through two again. So I'm pretty sure that was confusing. Let me tell you one more time. Yarn over, insert your hook into the chain. You're going to yarn over again, pull through two, yarn over one more time, and then pull through the remaining two. Okay, one more time here. Yarn over, insert the hook into the next chain, pull up a loop, yarn over again, pull through two, yarn over again, and then pull through another two. There you are. All right, and just continue to do that process all the way down the length of your chain. And that's what it should look like. And you want to be sure when you're working in this project, of course, to not be um, to not do really tight stitches um, anytime usually new crochet crocheters are not really good at judging the tension so their work can be a little tight um, and then it starts to kind of curve so just be real careful about not um, you know relax relax when you're doing it because if you if you see that you're getting a, a rainbow shape curve you're 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 pulling things too tightly okay and just continue to work that all the way down the row okay I'm coming back on to show you I'm at the end of that chain and I want to show you how to end that the first row and go to your next row so go ahead and continue on and now I'm going to show you here at the very end you can see that we have one last chain you're going to go ahead and yarn over and complete a double crochet into that chain and you'll see there that we're done. There's no more stitches. The work is straight and that is what we're looking for. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to complete um, a chain of two. And this chain of two here is going to serve as your first stitch. So do your chain two and then turn your work. 
okay now you're going to skip that first hole you're never ever ever going to put one in that hole when we're doing a double crochet at least when you're following one of my tutorials okay turn your work to the side there and then you'll be able to see like a v-stitch the v-stitch has a front loop and a back loop what we're going to be using is that back loop that is what's going to allow us to have the ribbing throughout this project so you're going to skip that first chain yarn over and then you're going to put the crochet hook into that back loop and I hope you can see that because that's what's going to give you that rib stitch okay and you're going to do a double crochet just like you did in that initial chain but you're just going to be doing it into the back stitch of the um, the back loop of that stitch okay and I'll show you again I'll show you a couple of times a few times okay so there you are back stitch And yarn over again and pull through both of those loops. Okay, I want to be sure that you get this because that if you don't get this concept, then you're not going to have a rib look, and that's okay too. But see there, I, I grabbed that highlighter hoping I could point it out better, but the highlighter was too big. So anyway, it's that back loop. I I wish I could point it to you, but yeah, you should see it. <laughs> there you go. Just put it in there, um, pull through two, and then put it through and put it pull through two more loops. Yeah. By the time you finish this project, you're going to be a rib stitching um, expert because that's that's all we're gonna do for this whole project, pretty much. Okay. There you are, pull through two, and then pull through another two. And just keep working this. Um, I'm going to go away and then come back at the end of this row. So continue to work if you need to pause the video so we can stay together, you can. Um, so here we are, I've um, skipped ahead to the end of the row just for filming purposes. Um, there you are. Because it's a little bit different than our initial row, I, I want to show you why it's just a little bit different um, than what we did initially. So your first row is going to be unique, and then all the remaining rows are going to be just like this row here that we're gonna we're getting to now. Okay, so you're gonna go ahead and do your double crochet there. Okay. Now that was the last stitch on the chain. However, remember we did the chain two when right before we turned our work? You have to put a stitch in that chain two. And that just seems so difficult to say, but if you turn your work to the side, you'll see that your work is not flush. It doesn't look even. There's like a little ridge. That's how you know that you need to put a stitch into that chain, okay? If you don't put one there, your work is gonna gradually um, in my experience my work has shrunk so there you are just stick it anywhere in that chain it's not like it has to be in a particular spot I try to find one area in all my chains so I, so I can be consistent but it doesn't matter as long as you get a stitch in that last chain you'll be good so so that you understand we're gonna do a chain two remember so we're gonna chain two right before we turn our work now we're gonna turn our work. When we work our way back across this chain, remember we've already done a chain two on the other side, we have to put a stitch in the chain two. So I hope that makes sense. It can be a little confusing, but you can either try to get it in here or through trial and error. And when you do your first project, if you don't get it, then you'll realize because your work will shrink, okay? So here we go. Remember, we we skipped the first we 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 skipped the first chain because we had already done that first stitch by doing the 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 chain of two. You go into the next chain and then you do your double crochet. I feel like I'm saying so much, but if you look at the at the computer screen, hopefully that will help illustrate the point that I'm trying to say with so many words. <laughs> okay, there you are. Perfect. Remember to just be um, be easy with it. Don't try to pull your work too tight. 
Um, and as you go along, really, it gets a lot simpler. Just don't give up after the first row because I know when I first started crocheting, I didn't feel like I could get it right. And I used the first row as the barometer for my success and that's the wrong thing to do. So just keep going, okay? There you are. So your work should be looking kind of like what you just saw there. And I fast forwarded it for filming purposes again. And this is it. That's that's your headband. I didn't make it too long. I meant too wide. Um, this is about four inches or so. So I have like a 20 by four um, headband because it's going to go around my ears and around like the frontal part of my head. So I didn't want it to be extremely big. I wasn't making a hat. Okay, so you want to make sure you leave yourself a tail, and I used, I left about 16 inches here. You really don't need that much, um, but um, just, just leave yourself a, a, a tail because you are going to do some stitching, some, some sewing, okay? So once you get to that very end, you've already cut your tail, you're going to yarn over, and you're going to pull that tail all the way through that loop. Um, that's going to end your project. So yarn over, and then pull all the way through, okay? Okay, and then your project is secure at that point. What, we're, what we'll do next is we're going to attach the two ends. We're going to attach the beginning of your project with the end of your project. You have that initial tail that you have from when we first did our, um, our foundation chain. We're going to just tuck that part in, okay? So using that tail, that's what we're going to use to do our stitch, to do our sewing, I guess. Okay, I'm using a tapestry needle. Um, they do have crochet needles that are a little bit easier to work with when you're dealing with thicker yarns. So this part right here is gonna be a little test of your wheels if you have a tapestry needle. Um, but if you have a crochet needle, it won't be as hard. So once you get your needle threaded with your yarn, you're going to um, pull it through and then you're going to start sewing. And it's not necessary for you to tie uh, anything together okay oh it looks like my video jumped a little bit okay so here I'm gonna show you how to um, combine the two ends I'm sorry I don't know what just happened there that was weird but um okay so here we are we're gonna combine the two ends together and uh, You're just gonna kind of do a, I wouldn't call, I guess it's like a running stitch. I'm not a sewer, but basically you're just gonna secure the two together. My suggestion to you would be to make sure that you look for a hole, an already established hole, because when you're trying to pull through the yarn, the yarn can get stuck if it's, you know, a small, because mind you, the needle head is a lot smaller than the the yarn so just kind of try to find a hole to get that um yarn through it i hope that was clear my video is doing a little bit of jumping around which is kind of strange but anyway i think you get the point you're just gonna um secure the two ends together and then you're going to do a running stitch up the um center Yeah, that's, that was weird how that kind of jumped around. But anyway, you can still see exactly what I'm trying to accomplish here. It's not, um, you're just going to run a stitch up the center so that you're able to cinch the middle together. Okay, see how that kind of pulls together? So you, um, yeah, so that's what it's looking like. Okay, so now you're going to go ahead and create the patch. That's what I'm calling it. It's a patch. It's the middle, the center section of your um, headband. Okay, so to do that, you're going to start. It's like you're starting another small little project, but this is so quick. It's not even really going to count as a project because it's really, really quick. You're going to do a chain, a foundation chain of five in my case now remember like I said before this could vary based off of the size of your headband if you're doing a smaller headband then your foundation chain could be smaller if you're doing a wider headband then you're probably gonna have a larger a longer foundation chain because you do have to be able to wrap this patch or 
I really should think of a better word for this, but the patch around your headband center. So um, remember, you're going to chain two after you do your five and crochet into the um, second stitch from the chain. Second, second stitch from the hook. I'm so glad this is a video because I think you can see it better than I'm explaining it. <laughs> Okay. And just remember you need to chain two and then turn your work just like if you were doing a larger um, project. What we're looking here is we're looking for width so that it's big enough to wrap around the center of the headband. And I'm just going to carry that double crochet into the um, back loop do this as well just so that it looks consistent and more complete I'm sorry that I'm sniffling I don't even know why I'm sniffling <laughs> maybe the headband is making me cold <laughs> okay there you are alrighty so now that we have our patch completed or the center portion we're going to finish this piece off now just like we did with our headband we're going to leave ourselves a tail you do not need to um, have a very long tail because we're only going to be sewing this portion onto the headband so um, yeah I tend to go overboard but just maybe make about six inches or so you know it doesn't have to be too long I guess for me, I, I'd rather have too much than not enough. Okay, so go ahead and, and finish off your work. Just yarn over and then pull through all the way through, like, just like that. And give it a little tug and there you have it. That portion is complete. Now all we have to do to finish this awesome headband is to um, put the two pieces together. So now remember that really long tail that I, I made? I just wrap a little bit of it around my headband to kind of bring the um, the center in a little bit more. Um, so I would wrap it around a few, a few times and then I would just kind of pull it through and make a knot. Um, yeah, no, no real rhyme and reason to how I do it. I just kind of, I wanted to look a certain way so I just kind of wrapped it. And I go ahead and cut that excess off and um, so and then we'll go ahead and attach this little patch piece same thing before we're going to thread our needle um, and we're going to go ahead and sew what do you think about that that looks good right okay <laughs> sorry somebody came in okay here we go so we're going to wrap this center patch around our headband um, just like that I just tuck in my tails at this point now you could you could just clip them if you want to but I just tuck them in um, probably clipping them would just be just as good because then you won't have any a lot of bulk underneath that but it's okay it didn't it didn't bother me none again um, just kind of wiggle it through and get that yarn through the holes if you can find an established hole based from your crochet hook that's probably better just because it's easier to get the yarn through but however you however you decide okay just keep on going so this is irrelevant but what do you think about my nail polish isn't it pretty I just got them done. I think that is the prettiest polish. Right, it reminds me of a uh, garnet, garnet. Okay, so there you are. You just gotta get that secured and get the um, get that little patch secured to the band. And however you need to do, it. I'm not a sewer. I do not sew. So I just kind of wiggle that needle around until I feel like it's secure. And that is secure to me. And bam, we have ourselves a headband slash ear muff warmer type 
thingy. <laughs> so isn't that cute? I think that's so cute. I love it. And I can imagine making that for a little baby if I just make it a little bit smaller, or even my daughter. I just think it's really cute. So anyway, there you have it. Um, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. Um, happy crochet. Thank you.